Welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Sarah Beth Russell. I'm going to be your presenter today. I'll be walking you through the basics of Vault. So just a few things to keep in mind though. This is a general Vault webinar. So if you have specific questions about how your chapter does something specific to your organization, you can reach out to your appropriate support email. But before we get started, I just wanted to remind you that at any point, if you have questions, you can use the question box, but we will also have a Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. So if you'd like to put anything in there, we will get to that at the end as well. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to my co-host, Hannah. She's gonna be the one answering the questions that come in during the webinar. And she's going to introduce us to who Omega Phi is before we get started. Hi everyone, so as Sarah Beth said, I'm just going to be going over really quick about who Megafy is. So for more than 30 years, Megafy has provided technology solutions to help customers manage their finances, streamline their operations, recruit new members, and communicate with their members. Whether it's working with 57 different headquarters or local chapters, house corporations, IFCs, and Panhellenic councils, also alumni associations across more than 650 campuses, we remain the industry leader when it comes to technology in the fraternity and sorority community. Based out of Columbus, Georgia, we securely process more than $1.1 million per day for our clients and have securely processed more than $4 billion since 1992. We're also deeply committed to serving, promoting, and advancing the fraternity and sorority experience. We aim to make raving fans with every individual or group we work with by reaching, innovating, and acting with agility. We challenge ourselves to dream big every day and to help others achieve their own dreams. To say we're passionate about what we do is an understatement, and it's this passion that has encouraged our clients to trust us to do the heavy lifting so they can focus on their mission and having fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hannah, for that introduction. We'll go ahead and look at our agenda today. So we're just going to be going through the each tab of Vault. We're going to look at the Communications tab, the Chapter tab, where you'll do most of your like updating of your statuses, that sort of thing, your billing tab, where you'll probably spend most of your time, especially if you are treasurer or in your chapter. Um, then we'll look at an overview of the bill pay tab, but we do have a more in-depth webinar if you ever want to check that out. And then we'll look at the accounting tab, and then we'll have some reminders and Q&A at the end. When talking about Vault, what is Vault? Vault is a Megafy solution to manage your chapter's billing, member collections, and payments. It's going to allow your officers and advisors to glimpse into the everyday financial operations of your chapter. So when you first log in here, we're looking at the home page. This is completely customizable to show what you want to see. So as you can see, the carousel up here. This is going to contain links to view action items, recommendations, and a few other things if you ever want to click on those to kind of look through some of those important messages. And then up in this right-hand corner here, you'll see the bell icon. This is going to notify you of any action items that require your attention, such as assigning new members to a billing group, updating Vault users, or to review past due bills. The gear icon right here is the administrative tools. This is where you'll manage your vault permissions, users, update custom member fields, and links to contract management features. We then also have the question mark here. So this is going to provide tips for utilizing whichever page you are on within Vault. And then we lastly have this grid icon here. This is going to allow you to navigate between various Omega Phi applications that you have access to. So if you have access to Omega One or Omega Recruit, or even as the admin, if you're wanting to look at your personal account for your billing, you can use the grid to switch in between that there. It will show you all the ones that you have access to. And so first, we're going to go ahead and look at the communications tab here. So we have a few different things underneath here. First, we have the announcements that we'll look at. Announcements can be shown to different audiences and tailored to fit the chapter's needs. So an example of announcements are reminders about a chapter meeting, philanthropy events, submitting study hours, etc. And then we also have calendar items under here. So these can be added to a personal or chapter calendar. Events on the calendar are going to be color coded. So Omega Phi statements will automatically show up on there. Those are due dates that are in blue. The national events will be in red. Personal events can be in orange and then chapter events are going to be in green. We also have the polls option here. So this can be created and shown to different audiences 
again, to fit the chapter's needs. You can create polls to solicit opinions from your members on where to hold an event or major chapter decisions. So you would just click to add the poll here and fill out that information and then hit create and that'll send out to your specific members, whatever audience you choose. And then we have your resource center here. This can be used as kind of like an e-filing cabinet. So your chapter documents, bylaws, other forms that you may want to be uploaded here, they can all live in this space for your members to be able to have access to. And then we have the mass email option here. So this is gonna let Vault users send mass emails to members and parents. You can send a mass email when you need to remind your members about a payment deadline. Um, or maybe use the email template to remind past due members about their specific balances owed, anything like that. You would just use the drop down here. If it's something that's a general reminder to the chapter, you can send it to all members. You can also use the option to filter criteria. And then there's also options for delinquency notifications for those who are past due. And then for your new members who maybe need to be reminded to establish access to their account, there's an option for that as well. You can just click accordingly and it will pop up here for how you wanna fill that out and then who to send it to and you can generate that email accordingly. And then lastly, under the communications tab, we'll look at the member contact information and the reports here. These are all gonna be options in these sections. They're just reports that allow you to pull specific contact info for your members quickly. So you can pull reports of their phone numbers, mailing and email addresses and emergency contacts if you need that information for things. So moving on to the chapter menu, this is where you'll go to manage your member roster to ensure member statuses are up to date and where you can view or update chapter information such as officers, chapter contacts, things of that sort. So first looking at the member roster here, this is just gonna display a complete chapter roster in two separate tables, active records and other records. So your active rep records is a list of members with a member status of new member and or initiate or whatever your organization may call those members. And then your other records are gonna be a list of members with statuses such as alumna, alumnus, disassociated, deceased, other, or maybe suspended. Those types of statuses, they are gonna be the ones that are in the other records. You also have the option here to add new members. So this is where you'll add your new members after Russia recruitment. New members added within the last seven days will also display here to avoid duplicate entry. Now, if your organization has national specific requirements regarding the entry of new members, you'll see those details listed here as well. Or if you're not sure of them, you can always reach out to HQ for more details on how to add your new members. So if these options here for add members in mass and add member aren't available to you, you'll have to add your new members through your national portal. And then next on that chapter menu, we have the option to archive your members. This archive member records removes the members for the roster and several reports. And then however, their transaction details are gonna remain on the financial reports. So you still see any monies that was recorded for them. Uh, members with a status of alumni, disassociated, deceased, other or suspended, they are eligible to be archived if they have a zero dollar balance. So you need to make sure if you're wanting to archive a member, member that they also have a zero dollar balance on their account as well. And then here we have update member statuses. So this is where you'll update statuses from new member to initiate or to alumnus, whatever it may need to be. You can do that in mass. So you would just click on the members accordingly. These are by new members. You can set their initiation date and change them to initiate. For some, depending on your national organization, you might not have this option. It may be based on submitting your initiation report and once that's approved, they will automatically move. So if you're not seeing the ability to be able to do that, it'll kind of note that on this page and you'll have to do that through other means. You can always ask if you're unsure on that, but this is where you can update your member statuses. Again, clicking and putting any dates in there and then just updating down here at the bottom. The reason that this is crucial is because national dues and fees are billed by your headquarters. Those may be based on these statuses. So we recommend that you update member statuses at the beginning and the end of each term to make sure that you are getting the correct invoice for your national dues and fees. And like I just mentioned, that member initiation reporting 
you may, the guidelines vary by organization, but you may have that ability to do that within Vault. So if your organization requires you to submit new mem members through Vault, then national specific instructions will be viewable here for you to submit your national initiation reporting. Now looking at the chapter information section down here, we have a few different things for chapter detail. This is going to display contact, tax, and other information for the chapter. You can go in and edit that if need be, if anything needs to be updated or anything has changed. Then we have your officers here. This is a list of both undergraduate and non-undergraduate and house corporation officers. So from here, you can add new officers, so like titles for the officers, and then put your specific member or contact in that officer position. I do want to note that if you put someone in an officer position that's an undergraduate member, they will automatically be granted the access to manage the communication menu on Vault. So this is the one that we talked about, allows officers to send mass emails and add chapter calendar items, polls, announcements, and other resource center documents. So you can edit that under the gear icon that we talked about earlier, but when you put them into an officer position, just know that they'll automatically have that permission granted. Now moving on to the house menu here, we have house details similar to chapter details. Anything that you need to know about the house, you can add a house, update that address. Any related information with that will be under here that just maintains a record for the chapter house property or meeting space, so you have that. And then you also have the contract management information. This is going to provide a better way for your chapter or house corporation to manage contracts and agreements with your members and parents. A few examples of that may be lease agreements, risk management agreements, social media agreements, parking contracts, or maybe like promissory notes. So you can create that under the contract management. It'll give you some of the details and everything. You can go to add a contract and it will kind of walk you through that. And next we'll move on to the billing menu. This is where you'll probably spend most of your time if you are the treasurer of your chapter. So this is where you're going to go to ensure your members are receiving the correct charges each term. Turn billing on or off for members. Set up the scheduled charges for the next semester add charges for t-shirts, events, fines, anything miscellaneous, that sort of thing. So looking first, we can look at the member list by billing group. This is just going to provide you a member list that can be sorted by your various different columns here. If you want to look at kind of a different breakdown of like what your billing groups are, you can look at the update billing groups here and filter that out. So if you want to see everybody who's in each individual billing group, you can select that and see everyone who's in the billing groups, update members to different billing groups accordingly. So just selecting the members, what billing group you need to move them into, and then hitting update billing group there. This just determines which schedule of charges will apply to their account on each billing cycle's bill on date. So what billing group you put them in is going to determine what charges they get. And then we, similar to member status, we have the update billing status here. This is going to determine, though, whether your members get charges or not. So the scheduled charges are going to auto-assess to a member's account. If active displays on the member's billing status field, then the system will automatically charge that member's account based on their billing group assignment. If they're marked as inactive, then no new scheduled charges will assess. However, if the member owes a balance, they will continue to receive statements from Omegafy until their balance is paid. Next, we can look at assigned members without a billing group. This page is going to show you any new members that are in a temporary billing group, so they don't have a billing group assigned to them. Typically, this happens if you have a user that adds new members and that Vault user doesn't have rights to the managed billing. So maybe like the secretary, he only has access to the chapter tab there and they'll go into a temporary billing group because he won't have the ability to place them into billing groups. Another reason this might happen is if you load your members into your headquarters portal and it pulls into Vault, then you may have a similar situation where they don't have a billing group when they automatically come into the system. So you'll want to make sure when you're adding your new members, you're checking this regularly so that they are assigned a billing group so they'll get charges. If they're in a temporary billing group, they're not going to receive any scheduled charges. So you want to keep that up to date. Another really good thing to check pretty consistently is the 
roster and billing discrepancies. This is good to check before billing goes out. This is going to display any members whose billing status conflicts with their member status. So it'll allow you time to update those statuses. For example, if a member is marked alum for their member status, but their billing status is active, typically alum aren't going to get billed. So those kind of conflict with each other. The system's going to tell you, and then you can either update them if they don't need to be alum or if they need to be marked inactive billing status, you can update them accordingly. Accordingly. And then looking under the statement details section here, we have a few different options. The billing overview here is going to display an overview of charges scheduled for a particular term. So winter, spring, summer, fall, whatever you guys have your system set up on. So according to the cycle, the billing type and the transaction description and account. So we can see here the dates up here and then each billing group laid out with their description type income account and then each cycles charges and this is also another way you can check members in a billing group if you want to look at those you can click on this and see what members are in each billing group and then we have our billing dates here this is just going to provide a list of all the scheduled billing cycles each billing cycle has four different dates so we have the bill on date here this is going to be the date scheduled charges are assessing to the account so they'll be pending on the member's account in accordance to what their billing status and billing group is the statement on date is when the statements will process and are sent to the members then the due on date is going to be what appears on the statement and the late after date here is going to be the date unpaid balances either age or late fee is assessed if your chapter has late fee set up in billing options and you can view that under billing options if you have that set up then we can look at statement contact information here this is going to be your chapter's primary contact for finances. It's going to appear on the member statement in addition to Omegafi's customer service information. So you can update that accordingly. You also can change the statement message. It's customizable and it appears at the bottom of your member statement. But due to space limitations, there is a max character limit of 255. So keep that in mind when you're changing that message there. Then we also have delinquency status messages here. You can click on that. This is going to appear if a member's account is delinquent. So Omega 5 is required to provide written notification to members of their delinquency in accordance with member consumer protection laws. You can select the link to that we just clicked on here and it's going to show you how those show up accordingly so each cycle that a member is past due will change their status so the first cycle they're past due they're past due delinquency delinquency status and then the next cycle severely past due and so on um, and then you also have under billing the late fee and prepayment options this is going to provide the chap chapter preferences for late fees and prepayment discounts um, amounts and criteria for both options are set up by the chapter um, or headquarters if you have like a national late fee late fees can be processed to delinquent members accounts based on either a flat rate or a percentage of the members balance also a late fee threshold can be set so if a member's balance is lower than the threshold then they don't get a late fee so you know they have to have at least like a $50 balance to get a late fee or however you want to put the threshold at um, and then prepayment discounts can be set up by billing groups as well for flexibility and then under the member payment section here you have the option to enter payments up to 15 payments received locally there's slots for 15 to record a payment you would just drop down select the member who paid the payment method so if you do check you'll then put in the check number and then the particular amount on that as well and then you'll click create payments to enter that payment, but do note that to eliminate liability for you guys as chapter officers and reduce trips to the bank, you can instruct your members to pay OmegaFi directly either through their online login or their My OmegaFi mobile app. They can also pay by mail or over the phone as well. And if they have their account number on their statement, they can pay just online without even logging in. So you can put payments in here, but Again, liability for you guys, definitely best to encourage your members to pay 
through Megafi. And then you can also look at any payments received through the system under your payments received report here. It's going to provide a summary of payments received within whatever specified date range you put in. The report's divided into two sections, the top section providing a list of member payments within that date range, and then the summary at the bottom has the total payments received locally and by Omegafi as well. We also have the auto pay report here. This is just going to show a list of members who have established auto pay on their Omegafi account if you need to look at that. Now we'll look at Two different ways you can add miscellaneous transactions. So like we talked about earlier, if you have like t-shirts, events, fines, anything like that you need to add, there's two different ways you can add that under this transaction section. You can add transactions in mass. This is gonna let you create transactions for multiple members accounts. This is typically good if you have multiple different amounts you're charging for. So if this person bought two tickets for an event and you need to put in that they paid $30 for that and then Another person only bought one ticket and they only paid 15. So if you have a bunch of different amounts, same with like late fees, t-shirts, anything like that, you would want to use this add transactions in mass page, preferably. And then you'll just put the type. So if it's a charge, the description of that, and then whatever income account that needs to go to, you can select that and then create the transactions. If you're having a bunch of transactions that are the same amount, you can do add transactions to a group. This is typically easier. So if you're adding it to a specific billing group, you can choose that billing group if it's being assessed to all the members in that group, or if you are just assessing it to 10 members and you wanna go through the list and click them accordingly, you would then go to the next step and put in the charge or credit once, add the description, pick the income account and then choose the amount. And when you hit the next button, it will assess those charges to all the members account, but you only have to put in the charge once. So this is really good if you are charging the same thing to everybody's account that you selected. Once you create your transactions, they are in a status of pending. So if you look at the view pending transactions here, it's going to be a list of transactions that will post overnight. So Omegafi posts transactions daily at approximately 3.45 a.m. So if there's any pending ones, they'll post at that time. Chapter created pending transactions are editable until the transaction posts to the member's account. So the icon here in this first column is going to let you know if the transaction action was entered by the chapter or by Omegafi. If it's by the chapter, there will be a little house logo. And then if it's by Omegafi, it'll have the Omegafi logo. You can also look at transaction search here. So if you're looking for a specific transaction that you're having trouble finding, you can search it by any of this criteria here and find that there. And then we also have under the delinquent accounts over here, we have basically this section is going to provide resources on how to manage members' accounts in delinquent status. We have the aging detail, which is going to provide aging summary of the whole chapter to indicate aging status of outstanding statements. It's also going to provide aging status on a member by member basis, sorting the members into their appropriate past due statuses. So like I said earlier, each time a cycle passes that they're past due, they'll go into a different status. So we have current past due, severely past due, pending charge off and charge off. So those correspond with just how many billing cycles past due a member is. Then we have the delinquency actions here. This is a tool to document payment arrangements or note about any actions taken against delinquent members. It provides an at a glance view of statistics that directly relate to successful collections for members with a delinquent balance. You also have the option to send members to collections. That's just going to show any of the members that are in charge off status that are eligible for collections. And it just assists the chapter's leaders in reviewing the accounts to determine which members actually need to be sent to collections. You also have your late fee management here. You can use this page for the ability to turn off late fees for specific members who have payment arrangements or a hardship. We recommend that you do regularly review this or review this page or review members with late fees held to ensure members are adhering to their payment arrangements and remove the hold on late fees when appropriate. Looking at the report section here, we have a few different reports. We have the member income report. That's gonna be a detailed accounting of all the member income during the date range selected, and there's three different levels of that report when you look at it. The balances by income account, that report contains a list of all members, a breakdown of each of the members' balances by income account, and includes subtotals of the balances owed for each income account. 
And then in the last section on the billing tab, the administrative tools, you'll find the donation form. This form can help you collect funds and information for alumni donations, gifts, special events registration, or chapter fundraisers. You can customize the form by choosing your own color, title, text, instructions, contact information, anything like that. And then after you create your form, you can provide interested donors or event attendees with that direct web address, or you can place the link on your chapter's website so they can access it there. And then payment can be remitted by Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. And then lastly on this, you have the option to order graphic cal t-shirts. So this just allows officers to be able to create a t-shirt for their members to order using graphic cal. Members will then be notified via their My Omega Phi account that a t-shirt is available for order. They can view the image of it and place their order online. And then looking at the bill pay tab here, we'll just kind of highlight this area, but we do, like I said earlier, have a recorded bill pay webinar if you want to go more in depth on that under the Help Center's video and webinar section. We encourage you to view that as well. But on this page, we have our register section. This is just going to show any bill pay funds that you have, their registers, and any officer purchasing cards as well. The bill pay funds are listed with the available balance, which includes all process transactions, pending deposits, pending payments, and pending transfers. The payments under here is going to allow you to view and add outstanding bills, approve them for payment, and view pending and scheduled payments to your vendors. If you have the option to print checks locally to issue reimbursements to members or pay your vendors directly, you can do that under here as well. Printing checks locally does require specific check stock though to print those so checks can't be printed on regular paper nor can they be printed on non omegafi check stock so if you'd like to order omegafi check stock make sure you contact your appropriate support email and send them your shipping address along with your check stock package you would like to purchase they can give you the options for that as well and then under the last tab we'll look at today, the accounting tab, this section is where you can build your chapter budget, put financial report or an executive board meeting or file your chapter's taxes. One thing to point out here, this is where your vault billing fee details are. So Omega Phi will calculate the chapter's total for the term based on the number of active status members on the chapter's billing roster. We then will put that total on this page based on your pricing and then we will withhold a percentage of each payment until we collect the total amount for the term. So for instance, if you owe a thousand for the term, then let's say 10% of each payment was withheld until you reach that a thousand amount. And then whenever that's paid off, no more percentage would be held from any other payments coming in. That's kind of how that would look like. The vault billing fee details though, just provides a breakdown of the fee, how much the total is, like I said, and then how much has been collected as well as the balance at any given point during the term. And then lastly, we do have our get help section here. This is a general resource and has a bunch of videos and articles that you can access here to help you navigate and complete tasks within Vault. You can search specific words or phrases. Like I said, articles, there's a lot of them in there matching your search result. They'll populate to help you find any answers you might need. I do want to point out we have this section here for new officers. So if you want to click into that or even for seasoned officers, if you just want to refresh on some things here, we have several checklists that you can look at for when you come into office. And that is it for that. I'm going to go ahead and jump in the question section and just see if we have anything. So we do have one question about what if I can't update a member's billing status? So if we want to look at that, typically what's happening with that, so under the billing tab, if we go to update billing statuses, you can see there are some members listed here where it looks like you can't update their billing status and all of them have this little red triangle next to them so what's going on with that is these members hold vault access so they have access to the vault system and for that reason you can't mark them inactive billing status because they're it's considered they are an active member within the chapter because they have vault access so if you need to mark 
them in active billing status because they've graduated or whatever the reason is, then you can go up to this gear icon here, remove their vault access, and then you'll be able to mark them inactive billing. And then another question we have is how do you delete a member who is quit the archive status? So we looked at that earlier, the archive, if you want to archive a member, you can do that under the chapter tab. For this though, you'll have to make sure they're in the correct status, so alumni, disassociated, other, whatever status may be considered like inactive for you guys, and then they'll have to have a zero dollar balance. So like these members here, you can see we can't archive them because they don't have a zero dollar balance on their account, but if there were members listed with zero dollar balance and with the member status, it'll give you the option to click on them and you can archive those members. And I think that is all the questions that we have for today. So we'll go ahead and close out. Just a quick reminder here on some tax filing stuff. If you haven't already, any chapters with their fiscal year ending in 630, your 990 due date is coming up on November 15th. And then for fiscal year ending in 731, December 15th is that tax filing due date. So just keep that in mind. And I'll put up this before we go. This is our contact information. So if you need that, we have our chapter support here. And then login support for any login issues. Member and parent billing support is the customer service at Omegafy. And then again, we have that get help in the in-app support. And we have a text number for our admins as well. And we will go ahead and close out for today. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.